Esther the Brave Queen Hadassah was an orphan girl. She sat alone on the doorstep of her empty house. Because there were tears in her eyes, she could not see the blue of the sky, nor the green of the grass, nor the yellow gold of the flowers. Mordecai, Hadassah's cousin, came to her house. Come, Hadassah, he said. Come live at my home. Hadassah gathered up her clothes and tied them into bundles. She was pleased to be going with cousin Mordecai to live with his family in the town of Shushan. Mordecai and Hadassah walked along the dusty road. Hadassah's sandals made small footprints in the dust. Mordecai sandals made very large footprints. Now, Hadassah could see the blue of the sky, the green of the grass, and the yellow gold of the flowers because no longer were there tears in her eyes. Mordecai worked for the king of Persia. Every day, he sat in the gate of the king's palace and answered the questions of the people who came asking for help. Hadassah sometimes carried lunch to Mordecai as he sat in the king's gate. Here's your lunch, cousin Mordecai. Pomegranates and cheese and bread with honey. Hadassah grew up to be a very pretty girl. She was such a happy, helpful girl that Mordecai said she was like a shining star or a shining light. No longer shall your name be Hadassah. It shall be Esther, which means a star. Esther liked her new name. Forever and always, she would try to shine as a star. Esther, Esther, Esther. Over and over, she said her new name. Now it happened that the king of Persia was planning to choose a queen. Gather together all the most beautiful maidens in the land said the king to his helpers, that I may choose a queen from among them. Esther was one of the maidens called to the palace. Mordecai watched them as they came through the gate. He thought there was none so beautiful as Esther. Maiden after maiden was presented to the king. All of them were beautiful, but when the king saw Esther, the shining star, he said, Esther shall be queen. With his own hands, the king placed a crown on Esther's head, a golden crown with pearls. Esther went to live in the queen's house in the palace gardens of the king. From her window, she could see cousin Mordecai as he sat in the king's gate. Esther read the king's list of palace rules. There was one very strict rule. It said that no one must go in before the king unless invited. If anyone did go in without being invited, that person would be put to death unless the king held out the golden scepter to him. A terrible thing happened in the land of Persia. A law was passed that on a certain day, all of God's people will be killed. Mordecai sent a messenger to Queen Esther telling her, 
you must go in before the king and ask that God's people be saved. I dare not go before the king unless I'm invited, said Esther. If the king should not hold out the golden scepter to me, I would be put to death. No, I cannot go in before the king. Mordecai again sent a messenger to Esther, saying, Don't be afraid. Maybe God has let you be queen for such time as this. Queen Esther replied, Appoint three days of prayer, and then I will go in before the king and ask him to save God's people. If I perish, I perish. Esther and her maids prayed in the queen's house. Mordecai and his friends prayed in his house. All through the land of Persia, God's people prayed. Carefully, Queen Esther made herself ready to go in before the king. She used her sweetest smelling perfumes and put on her prettiest royal robes. Then she and her maid said a last prayer. Slowly, they walked down the long hall to the throne room of the king. The king heard someone coming. He called. Who would dare to come before him uninvited? Take that person away. He was about to say when he saw that it was a lovely Queen Esther who had come to see him. The king smiled at her and held out the golden scepter. Esther came near and touched the scepter. What is thy request, Queen Esther? asked the king. It shall be given the even half of the kingdom. Esther invited the king to come to her house to a special dinner. At the dinner, she would ask the king to save God's people. And so it came about that the king made a new law and God's people were saved. Messengers, some on mules, some on camels, others on horses, still others on foot, raced through the land, spreading the glad news. God's people shouted for joy. Perhaps the happiest of all was Queen Esther, one Sadasa. The orphan girl, then Esther, the shining star, and now Esther, the brave queen.